no real way to ask this question without getting your answers mixed up, but Steve, if you could guess on a critical role, what would you play, and like what class and what race, and then Mary Elizabeth, what would you have him well, here's the thing. Uh, Will Friedle, uh was also a guest on. Uh, we did. They did two weeks of uh, a month of guests. So it was Felicia Day and I for uh, two weeks, and then it was Will Wheaton and Will Friedle for two weeks. So Will and I caught the bug bad. Like let's just say really bad. I'm still collecting dice, and I haven't played since then, which is bad. Uh, so we're actually going to do an offshoot. Uh, with us, not not on, uh, so it's just for us at home, and who knows what could happen. We might it. film it. But it's, uh, at this point, should I even say who it's going to be? That's fine. Right? Sure, why not? Sure, it's just us, it's a home game. But uh, Matt is going to DM, and it's going to be uh, Will Friedle, John DiMaggio, Steve, myself, wow. and uh, a couple other guys, and yeah. it should be really fun. Yeah, and I haven't chosen my character yet, but I... I have experience as a drunken dwarf in a certain video game. Yes. <laughs> so I'm thinking, since I've already farted lullabies, I might go in that direction. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. you can inspire people through farting. Through farting, yes. Scanlon <laughs> certainly does do a lot of poop. Yes. Uh, have, have there ever been like dwarf, uh, can you do like, 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 are there dwarf like spell casters? Yes. Is there, yeah. so what, what would that be, like a dwarf? If you do, do, you do any class, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no, no limited magic. magic. So, oh, that's awesome. They could be a dwarf oh, sorcerer. I've got a dwarf cleric. Oh, really? You oh. could? See, so you can do dwarf wizard. You said, I want to fight, but I also want to I could it. sorcerize? Yeah. yeah. That would be fantastic. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like, just, just like, like you did just then. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like it. That was really good. Also, also, I found I found this a bit of a coincidence. Um, I saw I, when I saw Cowboy Bebop the movie. I saw you know you voicing Spike facing down Vincent from Fate of Mars, and then I saw Final Fantasy VII and the children. I saw you voicing another Vincent. And I just thought it was a coincidence. Yes. Do you have anything to say? <laughs> yeah, I, that was that was actually a pretty cool coincidence. Yeah. I had nothing to do. I'm just a voice monkey dude. It was written long before I even got in the booth. Thank you, Mr. Plum. You're the reason I do my impressions. Awesome, man. Thank you. Keep it up. That hand wagging right there. Yes. Okay. Her luck. Remember that Naruto character Orochimaru? Oh. oh. He's the guy with. The... Did I take your party? <laughs> yes. Yeah, a lot of people auditioned for that role, but I knew immediately, I was like, this is Steve. <laughs> Funny that you think of me that way. <laughs> and I also think of you as Gilman. I knew we had actually cast another actor as Gilman, and we recorded the first episode. and spent like a four-hour session, and I knew it wasn't right. And uh, I said, it's, it, this is Steve. It's got to be Steve. All right, thanks, Mary Mai. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a question? Oh, no? Okay. No? Okay. <laughs> okay, you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, out of uh, all of the voice, that, all the characters you've voiced over the years in anime, which ones would you say were your favorites? <laughs> it's how, how do you choose favorites? I mean, it's it's really like uh, members of my family. It's like choosing, a, you know, which child do you drop off the cliff? <laughs> if you had to choose, you know, it's, I love them all equally. Yeah, it's, I mean, some in, in my case, some were you know more iconic than others. Spike became one of the, the biggest benchmarks of my life oh, yeah. and my career in so many different ways. Oh, yeah. But I, I love them all. Even uh, Vic Mignogna talks about Soldier A in his song. You guys heard Soldier A? Yeah. Where sometimes you get hired to do these little tiny bit parts, and you know you might have five seconds of screen time, and then you die. But in that moment, that's the most important thing in my life. So that that is my favorite thing because I'm working on that. And you have to put 100 percent of your attention on that at, at that moment. So for me, it's whatever I'm working on that day in that moment. I have to live in the present. Nice. Yeah, I completely agree. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you choose. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I got a question and a backup question. Yes. Okay. Uh, just in case you can't answer. So <laughs> the second one for both of you, but this one's for Steve. Anyway, so have you seen the um, the death battle between um, between Wolverine and Ryan? 
Have I seen it? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Bless you. So I'll go the second one. All right, so uh, for both of you, which one, so if you were to get a character but you already know the, the voice type, what would be the criteria for a deal-breaking character like you cannot do it, if, if that exists? I, at that point, if, if I can't do it, I mean, there's some roles I just can't play, like high, cute little thing, I, I, I can, no. So, um, but if, if, at some I've point it has to be like, <clears throat> that was last night, I was very high and cute last no. Um, <laughs> um, it would have to be content, I think. Uh, if something is like, you know, hentai is a lot about you know, rape and stuff, and I just don't want to do that. I don't want to. Uh, I get really sick of, of playing uh, or being a part of things where it's like women are, are constantly having to be saved. That starts to tick me off after a while because I think women are doing it for themselves, but um, <laughs> it's like, and sisters are. But uh, after a while, it's just like, come on, can we have another, uh, can we get a different uh, uh, role model for, for young women today? Or young men, too. Like, why do we have to put out that? Like, so for me, it's sort of a content thing, that if the content is offensive, then, then I won't do it. I can't, I can't do Sailor Moon's voice. <laughs> <laughs> but you can dress up like that. That's true. <laughs> I, can, I can rock those, what do they call them, tights? No. <laughs> The knee highs. The knee highs. Thing. Knee highs. <laughs> Rock those knee highs. Thing. I don't know the terminology. I'm a voice actor. What do I know? <laughs> With the glasses. No. Do you have? No. Yes. Cool. Yes. Umbrella core. Yeah. Okay. So you no love for no love for Resident Evil. You know what we did? Of course, there's no love for umbrella core. Here's. I know. Well, here's the thing. We do so many gigs, and oh, most of the time they. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me defend myself. For <laughs> is that we. We go in and they don't tell us the, t the title of anything because they don't trust us. It's smart. Because they would be like, hi, I'm on Twitter. I just voice a stitch. You know, it's like, it's a new show. Shut up. You know. So a lot of the time we do stuff that we don't even know what it is. Okay, my question is to my fellow geek boys over here. Yes, sir. I've actually won the beats and I'm 12 years old. So I'm a lot of okay, but you have to shoot higher. <laughs> <laughs> Aim higher, Matt. Okay. How do you feel about the fact that you probably voice 785 characters in Elvis Cole's online? Uh, wow, I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. I did not know that. It seems like every time I go to every NPC is you. I am trying to take over the world. Little at a time. One, one NPC. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I don't count. It's it's a weird thing. I I just work when they ask me to work. And I, I just say yes to almost everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I just love the funny thing. It's worth so many characters. It's like, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> it's either the yes. most annoying thing in the world or it's a great drinking game, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> you don't make it past five minutes in the game. You can drink for a while. Okay. Um, as world travelers, both of you have been in the business forever and have set standards, defied standards. Who amongst your peers, and there's a lot of them, I know, but out of all of them, who surprised you the most as far as talent and those who stand out of voice acting wise nowadays? Everyone, every day. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Every day. That's true. Yeah, you can get that. Yeah. Uh, the day before we came, Thursday, I had a morning session where I directed Kari Waldron, Kevin Michael Richardson, uh, and Dee Baker. Wow. And uh, for this new show. Uh, and, it's, and every day, you, they, people surprise you. Every single day, somebody comes in, and, because I directed Kari in Wolf's Reign 3,000 years ago, when she was just starting out, and so to see how much she has grown, and every day she comes up, and she'll come in the booth and do something different and new and surprising. Um, I think that's what's amazing about this industry and about this specific job, is that as long as you can still talk, you can still surprise people with what you can come up with. So there's always that opportunity. So I would say everyone, every day. Yeah. Yeah. On a side note, uh, I talked to Cam Clark over at Awesome Con. Oh, I love, love Cam. Doing those roles, yeah. it just uh, just an unbelievable range, and and the comedy that came out of that guy from nothing, it, it was astonishing. And I had known him for years. Yeah. And, and that's the, the greatest thing about working in these rooms with these actors. A lot of them are, are comedically trained or improv trained, and the whole uh, purpose behind all that is to come up with something new every single time. 
-hmm. And uh, the, the greatest stuff never makes it to the final cut in most cases. There's so much, like I was talking about the shenanigans in the room, unbelievable stuff like pee your pants funny yeah. every every session it's crazy so the people even even from the people we've known the longest and, mm -hmm. and we think we know what their whole repertoire is and all of a sudden they're gonna pull something out I mean D Baker pulls out new sounds every single day from his body that are not human <laughs> <laughs> not sure that all of them are coming from his mouth just two weeks ago uh, D came in and on pen zero and he does all of our monster voices. And if there's a giant fire-breathing chicken in uh, the most dangerous world imaginable, and at one point, he gets choked. So Dee said, I've been waiting my entire career to finally play choking the chicken. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. And that's what it sounded like. <laughs> yeah, um, it was perfect. How about you right here? Blue shirt. Okay. Um, actually, I get to... Uh, like, oh, no, no. This, this guy up here. And then we'll get back to you. Yeah. Uh, right here. Question about Emily. We've got a question about you guys. When did you guys realize it was going to become a cold hit? Was it during production, after, or years later? Well, when we recorded it in uh, about a year after it started airing in Japan. So, um... It was 1998, I think, or 1999. Yeah. So it didn't even make it to the air here. Like, I, we th uh, as we were doing it, I just thought, oh my God, nobody's ever going to see this. <laughs> so let's just make it amazing for us. So, uh, and then all of a sudden we found out, oh, it's going to the Cartoon Network. I think it went to Adult Swim, and we had to take out all the, the bad words. Um, there, weren't that many. <laughs> there weren't that many, to be honest, and I don't think they edited much of it. But uh, I remember going back in, and uh, it, was, it was a couple of years later, and we said, oh, this is going to TV. This is so exciting. And I just thought, man, I hope people like it as much as we do. So it was a couple of years later, and then it came out, and people... It, Changed my career, changed everything. Yeah, and I didn't really know how big it had become until many years later when I started doing the con circuit. And I heard that it was doing well, and we went to the movie premiere, and that, mm -hmm. that went really well. It was a packed house, and everybody seemed to really be into it. But I really hadn't been doing the con circuit, and it wasn't until I really started getting out in the world and meeting you guys and hearing how it affected your lives. Yeah. And some people would say that it brought them together as couples, or it got them through some horrible family illness. And... Uh, I mean, tons of stories like that that changed me on a cellular level. And that's when I really started listening to the stories that you guys came up with and how it was such a big part of your childhood. And uh, then the responsibility set in. I thought, oh, I should have worked even harder on this. <laughs> um, yeah, but it wasn't until many years later, and it's still, it's astonishing, 17 years later now, and we're doing a Bebop panel with the cast. It's, it's amazing the life that this has had. And it's taken on a an afterlife now where it's going to a new generation. It's, none of us could have predicted that. Yeah. Including the creator of the show. You have no idea. No, no, but I, I do love it. He loves our dog. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He loves it. Thankfully. So, thank you. Okay. <laughs> now fire away. Um, okay, I, 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 uh, I had a chance to meet you yesterday at the um, uh, autograph signing. Um, uh, I had told you, I was like, um, both my questions are for you, though. Because both of them are kind of like, I hate untrue stories uh, being said the first one. When you saw my copy of uh, uh, Boat Storm, which I absolutely loved. <laughs> um, I, I, just, like, I know there was kind of like, you know, it was like controversy with it when it came out. And then like a lot of people was like, well, the main part of it was basically they said that they always like, the main reason they put it out was to win everybody's appetite for, you know, the next year's game. And I was so hooked on it. So I was just curious, like, what stopped them from making uh, the second one? I'm a voice monkey. <laughs> I got no idea. I come in and I do words. Honest, honestly, I'm not, I'm not privy to any of those conversations at all. So uh, it's usually a corporate decision somewhere down the line, or it's a rights decision. You know, there's a lot of legal stuff that happens behind the scenes. I don't know. I really don't know. And my other question was, um, that being said, uh, uh, that being said, I was wondering if Marvel was here because he'd be, like, totally agree with me. Wolverine, I said, Wolverine and the X-Men, first off, loved it. Yeah. Thanks, that being said, why just, this is like, that being said, why just be must for the image of Apocalypse ruling over everybody, we don't know how it ended. That's, I would love to see that fight. Well, that one I do have an answer for. They actually had nine more episodes written for that show, and we were all on board, ready to go, but it was an offshore company that financed it. And from my understanding, they were like a real estate firm or something in England, and co-financed by a company in India, and they hold the rights to it. They actually license the rights from Marvel for that show. 
And when they found out that they had to pay residuals on it, they decided to file bankruptcy, not do entertainment anymore. And they took the rights with them. And so that's stuck in some legal limbo now. And now that Disney owns Marvel, they're going to want to do their own version of it. So I don't know if it'll ever come to pass. And all of us were heartbroken because it was it was one of my favorite incarnations of X-Men, whether I was on it or not. Yeah, I was, like I said, I was sitting there just waiting for it. I was just like, yes, we're going to go up against Puck. We're going to have X-Men. All of us had that opinion. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Can you choose? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, have you ever featured for coming out today? Um, I'm really enjoying you, uh, Mary, and Abigail, as Abigail Brand. I'm currently watching the movie. Oh, awesome! And, Thanks. And I'm currently playing Markham. So yay! You your, your voice pops up as well as playing with Marvel. Um, that being said, have you ever had the chance to meet your counterparts? Whether they be Japanese or not, um, I've only met Wolverine you... once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, like you know, like have you had no, a I, chance I, to see Koichi on the I wish, actually. I, I've always wanted to meet the woman who played, and I'm sorry, I don't know her name. It's Here's terrible. Mara uh, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, yeah Motoko. I've always yeah. wanted to because I feel like I, I played a lot of her. Uh, roles over the years. I, I felt like I was like, oh, I'm sort of vocally stalking you. Um, <laughs> because I, I continue to, to sort of play uh, the roles that she does, which is a huge, you know, it's just, yay, keep working, because then I can hopefully keep working. Uh, uh, but no, I haven't. I haven't, and I, I wish I had. I did get to meet uh, uh, Watanabe-san from uh, Cowboy Bebop, and we uh, had dinner together and, and shared sake and talked about the ending of Cowboy Bebop, and uh, apparently he's changed his mind since we have spoken of uh, the ending of that, which surprised me, but I think it's just sort of to leave it open to say, well, maybe, maybe, you know. but at the time, it was, it was a very definitive, no, you know, so, uh, but yeah, I think that was my favorite thing, was actually getting to meet uh, Toshihiro Watanabe, uh, no, Toshihiro Kawamoto-san, I got to meet as well, the, the character designer, who also did uh, uh, Wolf's Rain. Uh, and Tenkai Nights, this cute, cute little show that Steve was actually on as well. So, uh, yeah, I love meeting the, the production team of, of shows I get to work on, but I've never met the voice actors. Same, same for me, yeah. It's, it's very rare that, the, the only way that I meet most people is by coming to cons, including yeah. my friends from L.A. We don't see each other, so um, we, work, we work separately, especially in anime and video games, we work separately. So we, there's very small chance that we get to see each other, and they don't bring us at the same time to conventions, which is and do they ever Have they ever brought you guys over to Japan? No. No, I went over for uh, uh, the anime uh, convention with uh, the guys who, who hired us to do Cowboy Bebop. Oh. Um, so I got to go to the Tokyo Anime Fair uh, with them, but I didn't. That's when I met uh, Kawamoto-san. We got to go over to. Uh, was bones uh, and see what they were doing over there, which was great. But I never met the actors. Never I didn't get them. invited. <laughs> <laughs> Headphones, right there. Oh. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to say ha happy belated birthday to Mary. Hey, thank you. Happy belated birthday to Bruce Willis as well. Oh, thanks. Speaking of birthdays, the um, voice actress for Goku. Who has been doing the voice of Goku ever since the beginning and still is doing the voice. She is super indexed voices in uh, Master Boy. She just turned 79 on Sunday. Oh, wow. So I'm just saying, since you are far from 79, <laughs> how does that even measure in your head going back, or voice actors going back far in their careers? Well, know, Peter Collins. Yeah, yeah, Peter Collins. Peter. Peter's. 40. No, I don't know. <laughs> Stan Lee is in his 90s. Uh, he's still doing voiceover. Still doing voiceover, still standing up at the mic while he's doing voiceover, where a lot of voice actors sit down and record. Uh, still doing cameos. Yeah, still doing cameos in, in every production, practically. And I've worked with him several times. Uh, to see a guy like that, or to see June Foray, some of these people have been around forever, uh, and they are still just as vibrant and just as active. And they, they have these older person's bodies, but an eight-year-old inside, and you can see that sparkle in their eye when they come up to the microphone. That's who I want to be. I'm never going to stop doing this. I, I hope I can do it. Well. I'm only 78 now. I got a lot of good. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. I know that you are a just voice Oh, sorry. <laughs> but you're the closest to the business I may get for a while. 
you know anything about Ghost in the Shell Innocence? I know that fans are sometimes purists, they don't want dubs, but your voices are definitive to me, what can I say? We did, I thought we did like two versions of Innocence, didn't we? I thought, oh, I thought there's like, one that Crispin Freeman directed and one that Richard F. Carr directed. So there's like one for Europe and then there was one for the States. I think Crispin did the one for the States and then, am I, am I right? I, I look for the region one periodically and I've never found it. I mean, I don't think it's been legally released. We, I've got an English dub copy at home. So yeah, so I know it's definitely <laughs> out there. It, for it's the internet. Check the dealer room. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. 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 and they're two different versions, same cast. Different directors, different script. So, uh, and Innocence was the most confusing movie. I remember, it's like, I cannot stop the subtitles fast enough to be able, when Bato and what's his, uh, Crispin's character went into that loop. Togusa. Togusa, thank you, went into that loop, and I was like, I have no idea what's going on. I was like, I'm so glad I just came in at the end of that movie so I didn't even have to try and understand what was going on. It was such a cool, beautiful movie, but uh, beyond, beyond my level of education. <laughs> I'm glad I asked. Very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, so check the deal room. It's there. It's definitely there. Yeah. I love the Toonami shirt, Steve. Oh, thank you. When you were initially cast as Tom, do you have any idea that was going to be as big as it ended up getting? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know Toonami was a thing before that. And I didn't know that Sonny Strait had voiced Tom before me. I, didn't, I still have never met him. Uh, but had I known that there was a Tom before me, I would have called him and asked if it was okay, because that's what we do in our community. We really take care of each other. Uh, so for me, they, they said, well, no, this is the direction you want to go. It's already set in stone. Just enjoy the ride and see what happens. Well, they, they actually brought me in because of Cowboy Bebop. The guys are huge anime fans and gaming fans, and they knew some of my work, and they brought me in and asked me if I'd be interested in hosting a show on Cartoon Network, and I went, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we met for beers and it, it happened that quickly and that easily and I started recording within weeks and uh, for me it was just a really fun thing to do and it was the biggest thing I'd ever done in my career at that time so I thought that was the pinnacle of my career I thought that's I, I'm never going to do anything bigger than this <laughs> had I known uh, that Tsunami would become as big as it has and then uh, the resurgence of interest in Tsunami after we went off the air for four years and you guys brought it back. So thank you all for being here. It's a really humbling thing for all of us. The, I got together with uh, Jason DeMarco and Gil Austin in uh, San Diego Comic Con this last year. And um, we did a panel, we did a live panel inside the Meat Wad booth. I don't know if you guys saw this. It's an inflatable Meat Wad thing. We, we did this live broadcast for uh, Tsunami Pre Flight. And it was just amazing the love that just outpoured from this after all these years. It was incredible. It's, it's still humbling. I, I record it every week in my home studio, and uh, I still get just as excited about it now as I did back then. And especially when we're doing the inspirational speeches. That's our favorite part, and we had no idea the effect it would have on people until yeah. we start doing these conventions and people start telling me their stories, and uh, it, it's made me cry and laugh and change me as a person, too. So I, I can't say enough about how grateful I am for Tuna and for all of you who tune in.